All right, y'all. We're going to judge retro world. Today, we're going to go through and explain everything you need to know when and how to order your capacitors from console 5, all right? So, yeah, let, let's check it out. Let's get into it. I went ahead and ordered two of their kits, all right? And I ordered the two identical kits because both of my Super Famicom and my Super Nintendo had identical motherboards. So I was able just to go ahead and order just one kit. I did have some of these capacitors left over from the kit. I imagine there's one board revision with the same model number that has these, but I didn't see these. So if you know where these go, let me know because I didn't find them nowhere on my board. But yeah, let's crack it open and let's show you what I mean. You're going to need a phillips screwdriver just like this which is the you know square head okay this is a phillips head and then you're also going to need the little star bit security bit these cost like a dollar two dollars from amazon so order you the nintendo you know security bit screwdrivers yeah get you that and get your phillips head and then you can start opening up either your super nintendo or your super famicom I'm going to show open the Super Famicom because this Super Nintendo has already been customized and I, I don't want to touch it and open it more than I have to. This has been uh, completely restored with capacitor kits, power regulator, and a new shell. I, I ordered the uh, these white parts, the Atomic Purple also. They'll be here next week. So, yeah, that'll be another video. But let's crack open this Super Famicom so you can see what board revision and how to tell what type of capacitors you have so you can order the correct kit when going to console 5. So underneath we have six screws with the security bit. I'm going to take these out first. Once you remove those screws on the bottom, you better take the top off. Move it to the side. And now you can focus on taking a picture or drawing a picture diagram. What I did was I drew a diagram. So here's my little diagram. I went ahead and marked all the uh, capacitors already on this one. Now, you can make a little paper diagram like this. That way, once you do take down your board completely down, you'll be able to mark where all the screws are going to go and all the capacitors are going to go. And now, I didn't put the screws on this picture because I literally just laid them on the paper where they go. So, yeah, I'm going to set this to the side on the floor for me or another table. And uh, it'll be my guide to where to put everything back, where I take it out from. So I'm just going to lay the screws, you know, in all the different positions. Now, you can always kind of like make a little circle and put the screw in there or tape it down to that one spot so that you can know exactly where it goes. But, yeah, always having a diagram is always best, y'all. So, yeah, do this. So I'm going to go ahead and take everything apart. And uh, it's really easy. I'm just going to take these two screws out here, and this RF will come out. I mean, this little box. After those two screws, you just pull up gently. Okay. Just fits right in there. We're going to set this to the side. Now we can proceed by removing these other screws here and putting them all the correct spots. There's one down here. There's one here. One back here one right in there so we're going to remove all those after removing all those screws you'll be able to lift up of course the power button you know you got that screw missing under there and then the whole board will just come up like this so you'll be able to wash this wash the shell do whatever you want to do don't lose the little metal inserts inside the shell so one up here So now you got your board out, you better look at it. We're going to have to take some more screws to take this heat sink. Over here is the power regulator. Now I've changed this out for an up to date one. And apparently it doesn't get hot. So this heat sink is apparently not needed. But I like the look and shininess of it. So I went ahead and left it. But yeah, we can uh, pull the power cable out right here. Okay, be careful. 
and then take this screw right here for the voltage regulator okay I wish I had the power tools like that I fixed the thing but they don't sponsor me nobody sponsored me I'm just a little vato doing it myself Paying my old way. Oh, forgot about that. The RF shielding on the bottom. So now I'm going to remove one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Five screws, okay? Oh, no, I don't even have to remove this one. Just these four. That's right. That's right. So let me remove these. Removing those four screws allows you to take this heat sink off with the one that the heat sink had on here. Exposing the rest of the motherboard. Now... It's best to unplug your controller right here just by pulling this out. That way you can take the controller ports and clean this up and do whatever you need to do. But this allows you to see all the different capacitors that you have. And when you go to look up your kits, it's going to ask you is to have SMD or TH capacitors. And so you need to know what that means. SMD means surface mounted capacitors or through hole capacitors. These through hole, they come through and their points end up on the outside. They actually go through the hole. The surface mounted capacitors that are here are basically soldered right to the top of this motherboard. Now, either by a machine or by hand. Now, I did mine by hand. I needed to clean it up. As you can see, I still got some bras and flex in there. Flux is your friend. Always use a lot of flux. I really need to clean this board up, but I just did it real quick just to do it. I tested it and it worked out perfect. So now this Super Famicom is, has been preserved basically for another 30 years. Maybe even longer, you never know. But yeah, better, you know, a little power regulator over here and better capacitors now. So yeah, we're going to go ahead later on and get a shell and everything for her. But... That's how you know what kind of capacitors you have. Also, you go over here to this board and you look on the very top and there is your model number. It's your SHVC CPU 01. So that's Sonar Hotel Victory Charlie Charlie Papa University 01. I hope I said that right. Don't get mad at me. Now let's go to this website so we can order your capacitor kit and I'll let you go. All right, y'all. So when you go to your console 5, website you're gonna see over here where they have all the consoles and handheld capacitor kit section hyperlink and then it wants you to go down till you find your console but of course the way it works you can't see it so we're gonna go down here until we find our minor technical difficulty so i had to get my mouse so yeah just move your cursor over to the console and handheld capacitor kits little link this pull down will display with your mouse just move down until you get to your or is it a nintendo section and then nintendo you go down to your super nintendo and it says ntsc or pal so we're going to go to mine which is ntsc Oh, stop that. Okay, so here starts off with Super Game Boy, Super Game Boy 2. I don't need that. Actually, it really would be good for me to do a capacitor kit on the, the ones that I do have. Now, here you can start seeing where it says Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, SHVC revisions, all through hole style kits. So, you have, if you have all through hole only, then this will be the kit to order. Now, I had surface-mounted, you know, capacitors and one through-hole capacitor. So, for me, I would have to go and get this kit right here instead of this kit. Even though it shows right here the same model numbers, SHVC CPU 01 as my motherboard, they both are here, but there's two different types. There's one that has only through-hole and one that has surface-mounted. So... Make sure you get the correct one, and uh, yeah, and go out there and preserve your, your Super Nintendo. It take, took me like 15, 20 minutes to completely take all of them off, and I won't be showing how to remove them, but I will leave a link in the description to Nacho Machos, 
Acho Nacho production video showing you how to do the capacitors, you know, remove them five different ways. And so, yeah, yeah, go watch his video. It's very informational. Yeah, I use one of his methods with no problems. And yeah, it's really easy to do, y'all. It's really easy. But you can go through here and you'll be able to find your revision of what, you know, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo you have. Okay, you could have a one chip. I have the infamous two chip. Which uh, nobody wants, apparently, but hey, it works for me, so. But yeah, y'all, that's how you go and find out what type of capacitor kit you would need so you can order. And they're real cheap. Look at that. It's $4.95, so I suggest you order multiple ones. I ordered three kits. I got one from my Sega Genesis. That was very easy to order because it just had one huge capacitor kit for every single you know version of uh, Motherboard. <laughs> one through like six or seven like that. But yeah, y'all, I hope this helps. So until next time, peace and much love from Joe's Retro World. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.